ceramic penguin in the study always faces due south. <laughs> I like this movie better when it was called Apocalypto. And I like that better when it was called The Naked Prey. Damn. Hiya, guys. Welcome to the bug ridden cesspool that is my life and the life of one Nahi Tahima. Beta male. We have just uh, witnessed a film and uh, it also was very similar to what's that Wolf's After Earth? The Apocalypto meets After Earth. Get any vibes like that? Definitely Anybody get it? Uh, definitely didn't get after Earth. The sun trying to make it to Earth. I didn't see 10, after Earth. 10,000 BC maybe, but... I didn't see 10,000 BC. But anyways, in case anyone can figure out, the name of the movie we saw was... Mission Impossible 4. The Falling <laughs> Out. Man. Where man and dog become enemies. I really had an amusing time in the opening of this movie. It was actually Alpha. Yes? Alpha. Yes, Alpha. Alpha. Tale about the first dog, first domesticated canine. When it starts, they're hunting buffalo. Yes. Some sort of prehistoric, not prehistoric, 20,000 years ago buffalo, but they're charging at the buffalo, and I'm like, are they having a war with buffalo right now? Is it so prehistoric that they're instead of fighting man, they're fighting fucking animal? Yeah, I didn't exactly know where they were going at the beginning with that, but... Uh... Then they it was so the cheesy. Why did they do that cold open there? Just to go back and they, reintroduce everything. They, they wanted to start with something exciting before they kind of... It was only like 10-15 minutes of him, us learning this character, us learning the culture, and us yeah, getting on the hunt. Yeah, but for a lot of people, they want something to start with kind of a set piece. Which, you know, I agree with that. I think a lot of movies should start with set pieces, but, you know, this... Maybe the previous hunt, and somebody dies, so you know it's real... Yeah. Not the hunt we're about to see in 20 minutes after we already have seen it. Yeah, well, they, they don't, they, I was a little worried <laughs> when they go back to the hunt, but they, they skip past it. They don't, they don't For the most part, it. yeah, they don't, they Just go the over crawling. some of the key elements, but yeah. nothing crazy. Uh, when he fell, he falls, and during this hunt, a buffalo rams him, then horns him. And then runs over to the cliff, tosses him over. Yeah, the horn doesn't lands. go through him, but it just goes through his... Uh, his claw? His, yeah, his, um, yeah, his uh, jacket. I was worried this it may be the first wolf transition film. And I'm worried. I'm worried for the st state of politics and film at this point. Oh, boy. Damn! Sorry, I had to bring it there. I thought that was funny. Obviously, it wasn't, okay? You know, I... You swing you miss sometimes. Yeah, big wolf bullets are kind of I got Lion King a little bit because I thought the... Um, yeah, I guess, maybe. No, nah, because right when he goes over, there's like a conniving friend or a conniving fellow. At least he appears conniving. Like he's talking about if the tribe, they always will go, they'll go after the tribe. They'll go after the chief. Test him. I'm like, oh, so I guess that guy's going to do that while this kid's trying to get home. Didn't happen. Nothing like that. Yeah. So no Lion King except for him, you know, going over a cliff. Reverse Lion King because it was the sun going over the cliff. I kissed a bird and I liked it. <laughs> he um, is awakened by a, you know, an ancient... Uh, vulture. Ancient vulture. Black vulture bites him right on the lip. Oh, yeah, it's trying to rip his... Uh, Xenia on off. a top style. Oh, yeah. He starts coughing. He gets sick about halfway through. Go, he starts go, coughing man. up blood, but it... We don't really talk about it after we see it a couple times. The end result 
of canine aids from some of the previous scenes I saw. Uh, we're talking about dog aids, or are we talking about dog aids here? Come on. I mean, do you have anything to add to this discussion, Mr. Mm -hmm. to, to dog aids? I mean, I'm just listening to what you think of the film. I'm Doctors to... don't recommend yeah. carrying wolves on broken ankles. Damn, son, where'd you find this? <sighs> Pretty rough. Oh, man. So, uh, clearly you didn't like the film. Sweat. Very yeah, boring. I, like I said, I liked it better when it was Apocalypto, and I liked that better when it was The Naked Prey. Didn't really get The Naked Prey from this. Well, so. I got The Apocalypto, and The Apocalypto is the connection to The Naked Prey. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's in that genre, huh? I guess you could say, you know, with Apocalypto, 10,000 BC, you know, Naked Prey, that's all in that was family. Was this like the gray at all? Uh, no, this was not like The Grey at all. I mean, The Grey is a survival movie, so, I mean, that In that way, but, but yeah. not really. No. Other than that, it's like a group of survivors and wolves attack them. Yeah. Yeah, The Grey's a, the Grey's a pretty cool movie, Liam Neeson. I don't trust older Liam Neeson. Um, yeah, Joe Carnahan directed that, too. This movie had some interesting, um, interesting scenery, interesting, uh, you know... Those shots that they show right before you settle into the place where yeah. it's new. Yeah, I mean, I, I think called. visually there's a lot of really good stuff in the movie. A lot of um, CG. The animals, yeah. they for the most part, didn't look bad. A few times they did, but yeah, there was a couple, most part it was okay, at least. Some of the CG in the film uh, isn't very good, but when it's, when it's really good is in the backgrounds, when you, like, when they're first kind of going on their journey, uh... For the uh, speaking of, when they flash back, while they were CGIing, they halfway through they ran out of money because they couldn't even show the saber tooth thing in any real detail, completely shadowed. Yeah, which uh, I wish, cool I wish they see. did a little more with that. Yeah, there's there's definitely a few things. You know what would have would have really worked for me? I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. Would have really worked for me with the first. You remember the first saber tooth attack? Maybe saber tooth, maybe not. Just a giant cat is all we can really be sure of. Bigger than a wolf, At when easily. they're uh, just the On the campfire. way to the hunt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a storm going on. I'm waiting for lightning. Cats right there. You know what I mean? That would have really... Yeah. I thought, added a little I, I bit of I thought they tension. were going to do more there with the saber tooth. Because... It just, it's like 2001. It just takes somebody and then... Yeah. Next scene. Well, because the thing day. is that it's at night, so even if you don't have a very good like CG budget, um, when CG is put at night it always looks better yeah because so, it's darker um yeah I, I was a little disappointed they didn't do more with that but then again you got to think okay well they're in a group together it's at night it's taken one of them are they yeah. really going to go in the darkness and try to fucking you know take down a saber-toothed tiger well, no, i didn't expect them to you know? go after the tiger i mean lightning i'm not saying then that. the tiger's there i'm just saying practically back then yeah they're not going to go running. Like well, maybe morons. I figured stampeding a fucking herd of buffalo was a pretty dumb idea, too, but shit. Yeah, well, I mean, they were throwing their spears all in angles. They had, there was a technique. It's not like they just ran. And they were really them far away from them, them still. They yeah. weren't that close. Yeah. So. It just, the whole imagery of it opening up to them, like, what the fuck is happening right now? Obviously, it was a hunt. Yeah. Obviously, I'm some kind of an idiot. So, I mean, I will say visually there were a lot of things that I did like about that movie. There, um, I think, you know, the director, uh, Albert Hughes, who people will know from uh, Menace to Society, Dead Presidents. Uh, Two brothers from made hell. it. Yeah, well, no, they didn't. Just one of the brothers. I mean, not they this, haven't... but they made those yeah, films. Yeah, they made those. those. They, had a, they had a falling out, and um, I think... What uh, was the other one you said that was not Menace to Society or... Um, Dead Presidents, From Hell, the they, he, they did From Hell? Yeah, they did From Hell. That was like their It had first, some interesting ideas, studio movie. Yeah, it was just a really bad adaptation of uh, Alan Moore's graphic novel, which a lot of people thought was kind of uh, unfilmable, really, because it's very bizarre. But uh, anyway, on to... Albert Hughes, I think, is much more... Um, visual, you know, he, he did write, um, quite a bit of this and, uh, I think, you know, it is in another uh, language for those who don't know. Yeah. That, that's one of the things that I, I appreciated about it is that yeah, it I wasn't in it. English. You know, I think that that's just smarter and 
is better. And I do like the language. I like the sound of the language. I think it was cool. Um, and uh, I didn't really pay any mind. It was like um, white noise. Well, it wasn't white noise for me. Um, and I did like some of the rituals uh, for the tribe, like the way they tattoo, um, basically like the Big Dipper kind of. Uh, on their hands, you know, to, yeah. to mark the sky of where they need to go. The Big Dipper um, notes the direction home, yeah. or whatever they what, whatever uh, the actual. I'm sure twenty thousand years ago <laughs> yeah. it may have been different. Yeah, or something. whatever the yeah, huh. but um, that that was cool, um, and um, there was definitely specific shots throughout the movie where they would freeze, and I knew okay, well this was something clearly like and even in a, like a dream or something. Albert Hughes thought of this imagery. There's um there's a scene the aurora borealis scene uh that that was cool but there's one scene in particular when uh the uh the main character he falls through ice nice. I was just gonna I was thinking that's where you're going his, the wolf is jumping in the air above the ice and you see him underneath the water and it's such a gorgeous shot like it's 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 just really incredible and so. Uh, I definitely think, you know, a criticism people could say for it is, you know, kind of style over substance and a lot of things, uh, like that. Cause there were, there were that a may lot be, of shots I liked. That, that may be my problem too. Um, I liked a lot of stuff too. Like the lighting was great throughout, oh, even though it's, it's prehistoric times and there's no lights except for like, the stars. Like when it's really blue. Sun. Oh man. Yeah. That yeah, looked really good. And even there's a scene. The, uh, later, water. Yeah. Function. The water looked great. Even like like the mud, um, even when he's like in a tree, just um, when they're rubbing themselves with dung, it looked really cool. <laughs> it did look good. Like, uh, for some reason, I feel like everyone in our audience was really confused. Just in case anyone's wondering, they're rubbing themselves with the shit of the buffalo I, to hide their scent. I don't. I, at first, I thought it was shit, and I think some of it was, but then they they're in this like mud pit. And I don't know if like I don't I, I find it hard to believe that that's all, that whole mud pit was just buffalo shit that all the buffalo uh, shit. I, I would area. I would wager a good mixture of mud and <laughs> mud and, and the shit. shit of buffalo. <laughs> mud and the shit of buffalo. Uh, yeah. And... Who would have knew that there were furry rhinos in Europe? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's a very simplistic story. You know that that's what I would say to people. It's it's just a survival story. You know he gets separated from his tribe he breaks and, his ankle yeah he breaks his ankle he he gets attacked by these wolves he injures a wolf and that starts the kind and of relationship then, of trying instead to get of just home. eating him and ending the film right there <laughs> no i'm gonna be the first dog caretaker dog veterinarian I'm gonna be the wolf tamer 20,000 bc history's first canine lover there were a few scenes, like the one where he was caressing him in his thong, that made me uncomfortable, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, the a, buffalo a soldiers. Or die, I guess, man. Yeah, I know. I'm just fucking around here, you know. I, um, like I said, I was style over substance. A lot of great shots, a lot of great imagery, but. Yeah, visually beautiful on a lot I of was scenes. bored. Bored through most of it. Not a lot happening. I understand, yeah, his leg's broken. Oh, this wolf is here. The name of the movie is called Alpha. It's about the first dog. I wonder what's going to happen. Is the dog going to kill him in his sleep? I don't think so. But that's what this movie's about, and I'm sorry I keep, you know. Guys, I have shocking news. It turns out that AIDS made the leap in 20,000 B.C. From dog to man. I meant to make that joke earlier. I forgot. If you want to call it a joke. You brought up dog AIDS I did bring up dog AIDS, but I didn't bring up the it made the jump. Have you gotten diagnosed with AIDS? I watched really this video. Recently. I watched this video about um they finally figured out exactly where it came from and they think so well they believe monkeys, huh? No, that it was from monkeys. Okay. And uh, they believe the first cases are tracked to like nineteen oh eight. Uh I wanna say Congo, maybe that. I can't. Somewhere in Central Isn't Africa. Congo? Yeah. But there, I just didn't. Wouldn't have figured early 1900s. But think about that. It's in the chimps and chimps. It's in the apes <laughs> and primates in the 1908. Yeah. By the time the 70s and 80s are come around, it's made the jump. It's pretty, yeah. pretty and crazy, is right? It from people actually fucking the apes and then. Bring they them. said um, that's what I always thought. And <laughs> I always thought that I was funny thought. when they would say that the professional <laughs> sex ed teacher who came in once a year 
some people, some scientists believe it came from monkeys. My first thought, so people fucked monkeys? You had to go to sex ed once a year? In like 6th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade until high school. Then you do it one year and then really? it's over. Wow. But anyway, so... Once and then once in high school. Was that... It was of random times. Yeah. There was like a sex predator really lawn. I loved going to sex ed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was just alright. What were we just talking about though? I'm talking about AIDS. The leap. People um, would eat the the Bushmen. I don't know if that's offensive now. If it is, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> the Bushmen would just eat the eat the apes, eat the chimps. And that's I guess they got AIDS. Yeah. I guess. That Did you know sense. that? Um, I'm sorry we keep going all over the place here, but this movie really didn't have a lot of lot behind it. There was there's this mad cow like disease. There's this whole branch of that disease. I can't remember what it's called, but essentially it just degenerates your brain in deer now. Really? It was a problem in Europe, like one of the Nordic countries with elk. So they just like culled every fucking elk that they could that from that population. So it's and I think deer disease. Yeah. Huh. People, do you know that isn't people that have had like, it too? Isn't that from just like, like deer eating deer? That's what they got. That's so how cows, cows got it. Right. But they don't know how the deer are getting it. Deer That's how here people. Or deer in Europe. Deer here. Hmm. Elk in Europe. Deer here. In um, Papua New Guinea. Not Papua. That's a city or town. In New Guinea, this uh, thing Kiru popped up. It was basically mad cow disease, but the human form. They studied it. They didn't know how they got it. Here's what the guy. Who I heard say it hypothesized it as they would eat the ancestors brains or body parts after they die so out of all these people one person develops it then his family eats it then their family eat him and them hmm. and so on and so forth but it's essentially here's what happens to deer and to humans and to cows who get it you just walk aimlessly in a circle you can't really walk it's like you're shaking and shit like you got michael j fox disease or something uh, Lyme disease. no 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 parkinson's Al alzheimer's something like that parkinson's parkinson's i, I thought michael j fox had Lyme disease though he might but, but i'm yeah. pretty sure he also has parkinson's and um he might it just essentially eats your brain really Spongiform mycelopathy. Like no, it's not a parasite. It's, it's too small. It's a disease, I think he said. Disease. There might be yeah. some other question about what it actually is, so it oh. may not be a disease. I'm sorry. Oh, it's a good thing I don't eat medicine, man. <laughs> it's, it's not a parasite, I don't think. Sponge, spongiform encephalopathy. And they're discovering this That's what it's called. a lot the, of deer? Yeah. Shockingly high amounts of deer. There is no guaranteed if we eat them, it'll make the jump or make the leap. That's what I remember always hearing about mad cow disease. And if we ate it, it wouldn't affect us because it's a bovine spongiform encephalopathy. If I'm saying any of that right. <laughs> right. But still, I'd rather not risk it. Yeah, but how do you know? Exactly. I mean, what are you going to do, become vegan? I guess that's the only At thing first, I, I thought this was going to be a movie about the first vegan prehistoric man because he refused to <laughs> kill anything and then he eats maggots yeah yeah that, that was a little weird at the beginning when he wouldn't kill uh the bovine especially like, when he's like he, he had, had a full by the time by the old. time he's in the wild he has a full goatee going he's got to be like 22 i can't yeah, kill him that was, that was a mistake the, he's already been stabbed he's already dead area. essentially you're just you're just making your meal faster yeah. Oh, you know, some people are like that, you know. I yeah, I, no, I get it. It's a classic, you know, a classic sort and of... And it's trying to show the... Uh, the what, caring the nature that of will him. The happen to, yeah, later Yeah, that. You know? and, like, but also how the caring is what, you know, brings us canines forever. Yeah. Just so happens that the uh, canine was pregnant as well. Fuck spoilers. spoilers. Fuck spoilers. Like you said, there's nothing behind this. I mean... That's the big reveal. That's that's what the big meaning is. Oh, now we can all have dogs. Canines. I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed it. You liked it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it's a decent movie. Um, 
you know, it's, it's something that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend paying, you know, full price for, right. but you know, like if you got nothing budget, to do budget theater and it's on Netflix or budget theater, run, run, you know, run it. Um, I think you can get some enjoyment out of it. And, uh, and like I said, I, I, I didn't hate it. Uh, it, it takes its time, but I wasn't bored. You know, I visually, I was interested in that and yeah. I like these kinds of movies. Um, you know, survival. Yeah, the survival genre, and even, like, kind of going, you know, way back, uh, you know, like like you said, with Apocalypto and, uh, you know, like 10,000 BC. I like Apocalypto. I don't like this, though. I don't know why. Is there more to Apocalypto? Um, Apocalypto more about enslavement. A, There's a theme of enslavement, I guess. Apocalypto is a simple story. I mean, it's just him yeah, being him, hunted. Yeah, him being, being hunted, him yeah. trying to survive, but... That's it. Yeah. He's enslaved. And that's what I think you have to do for this Not once, movies. but twice. It's because language at that time is, is it's simple. People were simple. They weren't yeah. as advanced, you know, and, and, uh, there was a lot of repeating. I did catch that. There was a lot of sort of, he would say, they'd say like, we need you. You are the lead or I need you. We need you. It'd be like, ka, inita. Yeah. Ba, inita. Yeah. That's, so there was actual a structure to it. They yeah. weren't just fucking speaking in tongues. Hambalaga, yeah. shambala, la wanda. I, I, I do. Sorry. I just. I wish they went in a different direction with the story. Like when you More see violence. Um, yeah, I mean, like I, I'm fine with the PG-13 because I mean you got to make money, and I don't know what the budget was on this, but uh, I will say that, like when you see the friends, uh, the the father's friend, I liked him. I thought he was really good in the movie. I knew exactly that the, they set it up like you, they were going to be enemies. I'm like, yeah, come on, quit that, fucking jerking me off that, here. That was a cliche for sure. And then, then he goes, friend, and, and it's obvious, yeah. But it that goes was... on for like a solid three minutes of them just staring at each other. Uh, it just was too much for me. Another, yeah. I'm going to get into nitpicks because like I said, there's not a lot. It's a very simple movie, very simple story. Not simple movie, but very simple story. You simple know, very story, straightforward. For sure. I would have, I would have, um, all the stupid jokes I've made thus far that have not landed, which is fine, but also, I would have liked to have seen, I don't know, more, I don't know, more struggle, more challenge, as soon as the wolf gets there and is healthy after a day, he pretty much has food anytime he wants. Uh, I don't know, I mean, he, he definitely goes through struggle. Yeah, he I goes mean, through some struggle. There's definitely but... some vignettes of, you know, the dog getting him, you know, some fish, and, uh, you know, the dog helping him. How uh, long you know, was this movie, before. roughly? Uh, I think it was maybe 149. Um, felt really long for you. Not really. Well, like it wasn't. Hey, you're definitely miserable at watching this. I, I, I wasn't miserable. It's just I was waiting for something, something to grasp onto aside from the visuals. The sound, the score was kind of lame at the end. Right, uh, a I couple like scenes score. where it ended, I thought it was pretty lame, like cheesy '90s movie style. 90s. I was getting that vibe. '90s tribal music. It was some. Um, I don't know about that, but. I'm having a hard time describing exactly what it sounded like to me, but that's exactly what I saw. Like, imagine, do you ever see that Kevin Bacon movie where he teaches that African guy how to play basketball, or that Sean Connery movie where he tries to find medicine and... Medicine Man. Medicine Man, that kind of music. Yeah, well, that that would make more sense with having tribal kind of drums. You know, Medicine Man. That would but it, sense we're 20 years school. later, give me... But it's the update a little bit. Yeah, it's set in 20,000 BC. Travel music now probably is way different than it was back then. But don't you want to make it sound older than it would be? Why would you want to make contemporary tribal music in a movie that's supposed to be set 20,000 years ago? It sounded too much like a score for me to sort of get lost yeah, in it I mean, as listen, a. Um, you didn't like the score. You, you know, like as a. It's tribal. If it's just like tribal music setting up this great battle, this epic stand, then sure, yeah, I can get into it. But it sounds just like, all right, this is the time where the dog, we've realized the dog's going to make it, the boy's going to make it. So here's the triumphant tribal music. Yeah. I mean, I liked it at the beginning when it was, you know, kind of like just really intense drums. I dug that. When? What scene? 
at the very beginning when they're crawling in the grass in the buffalo. Yeah, that was that was um, that, really good that was there. intense. That was sort of that was a good way to build tension. But right at like I said, right after that, I'm like, what's going on? I don't really understand what I'm seeing. <laughs> Yeah. Buffalo soldier. Yeah. Um, Throwing spears into the ground. And and I guess there's a little bit of, like you said, with the Lion King, with the hyenas. And and that's another thing I felt missed See the hyenas? I didn't... Yeah, the hyenas should have attacked I or wish something. They did something. I didn't... Um, that, the know. only real Lion King connection for me was him falling off the cliff, the buffalo, and the, how it was the hyenas, son instead of the father. pretty big in Lion King. Yeah, but they didn't really. They weren't really a big threat to him throughout this movie, except for once when they chase him, and then it turns out the real threat is um something the saber else. Tiger the saber tooth tiger. I would have loved to have seen like a really dope CG saber tooth tiger. Yeah, that would have been cool. I, that's that's another thing where I just think that the script was a little a little misguided with kind of the set pieces. Too like ambitious. The, the bullet, no, the just the bullet points of what to hit to kind of make a big adventure. Hmm. Um. I definitely think it was. Would you say like Conan sure. the Barbarian, but a survival movie no. in BC? I've never this seen is, Conan the Barbarian. Like Conan the Barbarian. He mentioned it earlier, and for some reason I was yeah. thinking of it. No, Conan the Barbarian is an adventure movie, but yeah, that's it's. There's a Mission Impossible Two moment when he's precariously yeah, dangling you, you from a from a cliff. Yeah. Just because again we were talking about it moments before the movie started, right. and it just came up again. Coincidence or fate? You Maybe I'll use this big John Woo fan. Who knows? Could be. I like John Woo's Chinese movies. Just like I like Guillermo del Toro's Spanish movies. Not a big face off fan, huh? I've never seen it. Yeah. I want to take his face. I'm not a fan of his American movies. Oh. I haven't seen any of his movies. I saw okay. Mission Impossible. I saw The Hulk. He didn't direct The Hulk. Ang Lee did. Yep. You're right. Pardon me. There's another <laughs> American... Is there any other American movies he made? He made Broken Arrow. He made Hard Target. He did Paycheck. Paycheck. Yeah, Paycheck with Ben Affleck. That that was the movie that... Was he, Sam Jackson in it? No, no, no. Ben Affleck and Aaron Eckhart. And uh, that was the movie that where he said, Ah, fuck the U.S. studios. I'm going back to China. I can't blame them. That's when they really started really just fucking with him. Yeah, I think uh, I think the you know the marketing for this movie maybe. Uh, what was the marketing? Well, they had a voiceover Did they reveal? Guy, oh, okay. I was about uh, to say, did, they of... didn't reveal that it was in a foreign language. No, they didn't reveal that at all. Which which makes sense. Um, well, yeah, you can't sell it. Nobody would fucking no. see it. Got to trick on people. That on thing, huh? Just like you know Tarantino did with Inglorious Bastards. He tricked people seeing to see a foreign film. I liked and I loved Inglorious Bastards. FYI. Yeah. And uh, same thing with like uh, Danny Boyle with some bug on there. It was an Indian or Hindu or something. It's, the whole it's time. part English. It's part English, but majority is uh, foreign language Indian. Yeah. Should I see Slumdog Millionaire? Uh, I think so. I mean, it, I like Danny Boyle. I think he's a good director. But, I think uh, he's okay. Some flashes. How of many great movies stuff. of his have you actually seen? 28 Days Later, Shallow yeah. Graves, the other early Scottish one. And the other 28 days ordinary. later, huh? Life less ordinary. Is that it? Those are maybe. Special. Something Train else, spotting. maybe. Train spotting, yeah. yeah. Train spotting, like, I got it, I get it, but is it a comedy or is it supposed to be like a serious movie about a really dark, serious, comedy. dark thing? Okay, all right. Sometimes I don't get, like, I saw the Kubrick one, How I, how I Learned to Strange Stop Strange Worrying. Life. Dr. Strange Lover, How I Learned to Stop Worrying or Love the Bomb, and I'm like, this is really stupid, Dad. I don't know why you're making me watch this. This is really dumb. Yeah. I and remember. then I just check it out on Netflix five, ten years later. Oh, it's supposed to be funny. Okay. But you didn't know it was supposed to be funny? Well, yeah. you know, geopolitics. I'm fucking eight or nine or <laughs> ten. Yeah. I never watched it when I was young. But, yeah, I, uh, I, I, the only reason why I watched it because of Coen Brothers and they talked about, like, the scene. With, like, Would the, you rate that it's... Go on, I'm sorry. They, they were talking about, like, the scene where, like, planes are having sex with each other in the air. Um, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when they refuel it. Right, yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then, then I watched it. But... Too artsy for you? It's just, it's not funny yeah, enough too young. for me. It was just too young when I saw it. You haven't seen it since? No, nah, I've never rewatched it. I rewatched it not, maybe two, three years ago. I didn't really find it that funny. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's just different time, and also, you know, English humor is very different than American. So I'm usually down. I usually love uh, good English British wit. Yeah. There's a lot of people it. really just don't like that super dry humor. Maybe uh, that you have to like sort of you have to be paying you gotta attention. Work, you got to work for it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but uh, and a lot of English humor, I don't like actually laugh, but I enjoy it. Like I like you it, think it's clever. You're like, oh, yeah. that's clever. Yeah, like oh, that's funny. You know, it's like with kind of like Edgar Wright movies. Like I really enjoy his movies i love watching them i don't really think they're funny you know i thought uh, hot fuzz had its moments some yes, of the I've movie references like fuzz. not even during the uh it was such a disappointment to me because what's... i love Shaun of the dead so much what's the movie with the point break there you go even with the point break reference i you was didn't even dying have to say when he did that anything and I just he's he just is, did they show the scene where he does that though points up and starts shooting <laughs> ah! But did they show? They were showing move scenes show from Point Break. Break. The movie? Did they show remember. that scene? I haven't seen it. It's on Netflix. I, I've been wanting to rewatch it. I think it's again. It's got sharp British I wit, it which on, I like. When it came out on DVD, and I was just like so sad, and I just I sold it to one of my friends. Yeah, yeah. Love Shaun of the Dead though. I like. Uh, I think I like Hot Fuzz better than Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Too much uh, the romance, relationship drama thing going too on much for me. Too much of a buddy film for you, huh? Well, Hot Fuzz was a buddy film, too. Yeah. I liked that the um, Neighborhood Watch Association. NWI? Yeah. Where the NWI? I mean, it's a, it's a clever movie, you know. I That's what I like works. about it. It's sort of, as long as you're paying attention, you, mm. you're rewarded. What do you enjoyed, think about... I enjoyed The World's End. I saw it in the theater. World's End. I thought it was... I saw it, first time I saw it, I was like, this the same guys that made those other two movies I liked? Yeah. So I saw it again, better, but yeah. still not as good. No, it's the least of the trilogy. I like Simon Pegg as the sort of good guy. I don't know. Maybe I was it's put off the, as him uh, as the douchebag. asshole fans. Yeah. Maybe that was it. But it wasn't as bad as the first time I saw it. I feel like too many people. Well, I mean, it was so hyped up because, I mean, it came out the same year as This is the End and everybody was like, Did you oh, like This is I the hated End? This is the I end. hated This is the End as well. <laughs> I fucking hated it. Everyone was hyping that up so much. And when I, I know, it, right? When That's I the problem it, with comedies. This, every time like, there's, a big, the there's a big comedy like that, I mean, everyone insane. goes nuts. I go and see it. I'm like, yeah. are there any jokes the, in this the, comedy? The hype for This is the End was like insane. I like everybody. seeing Channing Tating at the end as like a and yeah, M slave. That was funny. Right. I laughed at one thing in that entire movie. The jerking off part? No, no. It was, um, there's a scene where um, Craig Robinson is talking to this camera, and he's, like, freaking out. And he's like, I drank my piss today. Yeah. It's pretty good. It, <laughs> it was, was like, I should have done was, this before. It was sort of like the next morning or yeah, something, I think, right? That was right? the only thing I laughed at. In I saw movie. it once. I can't really remember too yeah, much I never want to watch it ever again. I just did not like it at all. And uh, even like the thing with like the devil's dick, and I was just like, this is so fucking stupid. The devil's dick. Did um somebody yeah. actually get raped by the devil or something? No. Did they show the devil at all? I don't remember. Uh, I I don't think so. It was, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a giant. Okay. It was like a giant. It was like, towering uh, over the it was world. like Godzilla he was. It and was like the, Godzilla he was. was. Sound like an old Jewish and just, uh, comedian. And, uh, just even like the musical number at the end. And, and I, uh. There was a musical number at the end? You don't remember in like heaven they're doing like the musical thing? Oh, I was probably it's tuned there. out by that point. Because yeah, like I said, bad. I didn't. When there's, it's you're watching a comedy and you yeah. you don't laugh once. It's kind of yeah, and and uh, that's why I enjoyed the, the World's End way more, uh, way more. And this is yeah, it's just way yeah. smarter. Film. There's a, there's I some mean, even if I smart. hated the comedy in This Is the End, the World's End, there's something to it at least. Like you know, I'm not yeah. sitting here just hoping for something to happen. Yeah, it's just uh, just a much better film as well too. Just mm. more well made. What, any problems with Apocalypto? With oh, Apocalypto? Yeah. Um, Since we're talking survival <laughs> and trying to talk survival here. Uh, I think, you know, I haven't rewatched it even since I bought it on Blu-ray, since I, I found out a I, I, copy. I, I may have bought one. I can't remember even. But, uh, you know, I think there was like a little CG and b maybe blood that I didn't like. Uh, and I and I do think the you know spoiler alert for the ending of Apocalypse if you haven't seen it when you see the colony ships I'm like oh, 
I thought that was a little cheap. Way I was to like, end it. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that that's kind of a, a bummer way to end it. I've always thought that, but it's it's a fantastic film. It's I mean, it's on. But what a good way. But yeah, but that that's the whole point, man. Not only did you just escape this inhabitable world that you already are living in, now you got to escape you go. this. You're probably gonna get shot by a musket from one of these colonists coming off the thing, the boat. Yeah. You know, so it's... Would you you would have liked it better? How would you have liked to have seen it end? No colonist? Just sort of he makes it back to his house, saves his wife? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... Wife. He, <laughs> wife. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, he, he he didn't want to do that. He wanted to do something different. But, uh, you know, I just... I, I, it would have been nicer for me, you know. But, hey, you know, that's one of those, you know, studio notes, whatever. And I haven't watched he it. He released it himself. He paid for everything, so... Was this after... This was before his whole big Jewish tirade, tirade or rant? Yes, yes. This was before the whole Sugar Tits uh, incident. I don't remember much about it, because after asking you that, I realized I haven't watched the whole thing since I was, like... In high school? Yeah, he said in an interview, I think he had like six double martinis or something like that, and then got in his car and drove, so. No, I mean Apocalypto. Oh. No, that that, that may have happened when I was in high school, I couldn't really <laughs> say. I wasn't in new, the Mel Gibson news circle. Mm -hmm. I saw, I've seen The Naked Prey more recently. It's, uh... Did you say uh, they're doing a Criterion or something like that you were going to They get? did. I was going to, but it's either only on DVD or Barnes & Noble just had the DVD. Wow. Uh, yeah. Same thing with Silence of the Lambs. They didn't have a Blu-ray copy of that. Yeah, Same thing with, uh... The Vanishing, maybe? There's a couple other movies I wanted to get. Yeah. I ended up going with, um... Everybody's favorite recommendation, Bicycle Thieves, Kronos, um, I bought another couple non-criterion oh, movies. Yeah, The Witch and... Did you have any, did you have Devil's Backbone already? Or yeah, I got, I have... Because they did a, the triple pack then, Craig during the... Those are way overpriced usually, aren't they? No, but I'm saying if you were going to... Yeah, but I got three, three, you know, triple pack I have, thing. um... Pan's Labyrinth, but it's pre before they did that. Ah, the shitty one, shitty transfer. It's bad transfer. Yeah, that's why they did the Criterion. Great. Yeah, it looks not bad. I've never, but it probably doesn't look as sharp passable, as it could. Passable, you know? yeah. I've never seen the Criterion one, so I can't say any difference or not. I wanted to get. I was thinking about Fear and Loathing on Criterion. Is there any transfer issues with that or anything? You know, Terry Gilliam is just one of those guys. I think mean, he's just so hit and mess as a director. Just, I you know, love like, you. Can't. What don't you like about Fear and Loathing? It's too meandering. It's just fucking just insanity. I mean, exactly. It's like, that's what I get. That's what it is. Yeah. But I can't fucking deal with that shit. I just can't fucking. It's watch like it. I just pay attention it's to what he's. Fever dream. It's just a fucking fever dream. It's movie. like so uh, take... Hot Fuzz or whatever. Hot the fuzz. other. You just pay attention to what he's saying. This is. It's a goddamn lizard factory in here or something like. It's a goddamn lizard zoo. This fucking Johnny Depp with that fucking cigarette holder. Johnny thing Depp used to be really solid. I saw him in a preview for that new Harry Potter him? movie, was and I was, was Ed Wood. Him? Ed Wood, he was really good in. You ever um, see that movie Dead Man? I've never seen Dead it, but Man, people usually say that. Dead Man, Jim Jarmusch, fucking fantastic. I've never seen it. I love Jim Jarmusch. Um, uh, yeah, he, he had some solid stuff, but he had a lot of shit, too. Yeah. I mean, like, the Don Juan movie and fucking uh, Chocolat. Chocolat was later, but that was like 2001, I think. Um, but he, yeah, I mean, he's always been very hit and miss. I mean, nick of time. Let's get shit. back to um. I remember I had a copy of Congo or something, and that was one of the previews. There's always preview movies that I've never seen, nick but I always remember the preview. the preview. Nick of Time is one. Back to um, Terry Gilliam. Concept. What Terry Gilliam movies do you really like? I own one Terry Gilliam movie. Can you guess what it is? Brazil? <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. You seriously Another don't like shit. Brazil? I fucking hate Brazil, dude. It's so cynical. I love it. I mean, it, it depends on w what you're talking about. I, I don't even think I've ever seen the director's cut. I think I've only seen the theatrical cut. Seriously? Yeah. The director's cut? The theatrical cut undercuts the entire yeah, point of the movie. That's the one that everyone saw for years, and that's what I saw. And I've just just for just your own, yeah, just I'll for your own sanity, see the director's see cut. I I saw the theatrical cut when I was younger, so I can't. I don't. Mm -hmm. 
I don't really remember much or anything. I don't remember any of the differences, but I definitely remember that they made the ending happy when the ending is supposed to be really yeah. bleak. Like yeah. the most bleak I, ending ever. I've seen a lot of his films, and, and I always see them. You know, What's the one out. movie you own? You can't guess? Twelve Monkeys. I like Twelve Monkeys. Twelve Monkeys is really good. I think it's even Not even the, the Monty Python stuff, like uh, Holy Grail. I've, you can't get down I've honestly it. haven't or even really seen uh, the Monty Python stuff. I haven't seen Holy Grail. Holy Grail is worth it for sure. That's the only one that I've seen, at least lately, I've that seen, I can uh, remember. Book of... What is it? Ryan or... Brian. 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 Yeah. Life of Brian. Life of Brian, right. <laughs> I've never Brian. seen it either. Yeah, uh, you know, I've seen the Zero Theorem. Did you ever see Time shit. Bandits? No, I don't think I saw Time Bandits. I haven't it's seen the watch. Thing. It's good. It's I charming. The, I want to see the Fisher King. I've heard that's really good. I've never seen it. It's on Criterion as well. Jeff yeah. Bridges is in it, Jeff right? Jeff Bridges, Robin Williams. Yeah. I just, I think when he's restrained, which is 12 Monkeys for the most part, and, uh, you know, um, uh, like Fisher King, it's just when he's so. I mean, but that's why he has vision. That's why people like him is because he's so eccentric with all this stuff. But it's just all, all the little things, you know, just all these little gadgets and steampunk shit kind of that he Bob Hoskins in is in Brazil. Yeah, Robert De Niro is too. And Robert De Niro. Oh. I came, went in thinking he was going to be star, and I'm like, who the fuck is this English? When I was a kid, I'm like, who the fuck is this English guy? I thought Robert De Niro was going to be it. Isn't the lead guy um, I love Jonathan, Jonathan Price? Price. Yeah, yeah, he's Jonathan a great. I think he's a great actor. I think I love his work. Yeah. Uh, Hit or miss. Yeah, I mean he's terrible. And Tomorrow never dies. Well, yeah, just, but James uh, Bond, he's true. You're trying to be a bad. You have to be chew terrible, the scene. Yeah. You have to be terrible. You can be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's just and that and at that point, all the series I need, wasn't campy. It was. Yeah. It was gone back to being better, but. All I, I really need to say in his defense is Brazil, because I can't think of anything else. Oh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. He had a small part, but it was good. I still haven't seen it. I really want to see that. He had a um, small part, but it was, you know, he was, he was an American guy. I, I really got to talk to you. My wife. I, I got to cancel. I can't. I got to cancel the check. My wife. Yeah. Was, I, li I really, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, another one, just super sharp, super witty. Well, it's a David Mamet script, I think, right? Yeah. He directed it, too, or something, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure if he did or not. Al Pacino. Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. He's only he's even in it less time than Jonathan yeah. Price, but he take, he steals the show Doesn't even more. Doesn't he scream, like, always be closing, isn't that the thing? Always be closing. Yeah. Put that coffee down. I love Alec Baldwin. I, I used to. saw him in Black Clans, man. I used to really like him. When he was skinny, he was, I don't know, it's like he cared. I like him in The Departed, though. I, I mean, he was solid in he The was, Departed. Uh, he was good in uh, Blue Jasmine, a Woody Allen movie. He was really good in that. I have seen, like, I've seen no Woody Allen movies. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried it's going to be, like... He's made so many films. There's some really good ones, too. Yeah. But, like, the, he, he's, he's a really hit and miss. But, man, when he's, when he's on, he's on. From Woody Allen to Dog Aids, Rudy Land has got it all. The score for Alpha. God damn it, what a great line to close on. Alpha will go five. Really great visuals. Really, um. I don't know. I, if I didn't see it before in Apocalypto or something else, it might have been better. Yeah, I'd, I'd give it a five. I think that's where I fall. I just, um. You know, visually, really beautiful. I wish it, I wish it, you know, went in different directions with, um. You know, the, the way it was told. And, you know, it, it is what it is. Some survival recommendations. Um, Like we said, Apocalypto, uh, Apocalypto. Naked Prey. Any others yeah. you can add real quick? Um, survival. survival. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say The Grey. The Grey is a good movie. Um, There's a ton because it's sort of a sneaky genre. Like, you could be survival yeah. horror. Like, you could be like... Locked in the bottom in some dude's basement. It's look, uh, look away. Don't look. The lights movie where the guy's blind. Don't breathe. Don't breathe. That you could call that a sort of a survival escape movie because you're I trying guess. to survive and escape. Like I've said many times before. I make an argument for. Anything. I can make an argument. You can make an argument for almost anything. Um. Yeah, I think that's more in the home invasion genre, but yeah. still. Yeah. They have to. They they flip the they script flip, though. They flip. They the flip script, the script. Though, yeah. All right. Flip Recognize. The script, yeah. Put respect on a name. 
all the way here to tell you, if you don't want to get a brain-eating disease, do not fuck deer under any circumstance. If they're walking in circles, frothing at the mouth and shit, just put your penis away. Hide it. Stow that shit.